On March 6, 1987, the Herald of Free Enterprise, a roll-on, roll-off car and passenger ferry, set off on a routine voyage from Zeebrugge in Belgium to the UK. It was not her normal route, but she had done the same trip several times. Though nobody knew it at the time, this would be the last voyage the vessel would take. Although they were running slightly late, everything seemed to be normal on the bridge. They departed the terminal and picked up speed to around 18 knots, unaware that the bow doors were wide open. Large quantities of water entered the car deck, resulting in free surface effect that decreased the vessel's stability. Within seconds, it started to list to port. An estimated 2,000 tons of water entered the car deck in around 30 seconds until the vessel listed some 30 degrees to port for a second time and lost her stability. She capsized and grounded, ending up on her side, half submerged in the shallow water. She rested on a sandbank that prevented her sinking further to the bottom of the river. Nearby boats noticed the stranded vessel and immediately called for help, but the ship was on the edge of a sandbank with the passengers and crew trapped inside. Rescue teams battled with the cold temperatures of the North Sea, attempting to save as many people as possible. They were worried that the ship might dislodge from the sandbank and sink to the bottom at any second. They saved the majority of the passengers, but 188 people died in what was deemed Britain's largest maritime tragedy since the Titanic. As the bow doors could not be seen from the bridge, the crew had previously asked for an indicator to be fitted on the bridge to show when it was open or shut, but that request had been denied. This, along with human error, contributed to the terrible accident. The loss of life and the following investigation are seen as the driving force behind the introduction of the ISM code. Becoming part of SOLAS, the ISM code was created to avoid such tragic losses of life by making sure that the correct written procedures are made available to the crew and then followed. It also ensures there is clear accountability for the decisions that affect safety and pollution, all the way up to the highest level of a company. After successful completion of this module, you will understand why the ISM code is needed. Identify its main objectives and recognize that it seeks to improve management systems in order to reduce accidents caused by human error and identify the reporting requirements within a safety management system. You will also recognize the types of work that require a permit, as well as the reports, audits and reviews that are required to ensure ship safety and pollution avoidance. Although the ISM code is part of SOLAS, the main body of SOLAS is concerned with how ships are built and equipped, while MARPOL gives the regulations on pollution avoidance. In essence, all shipping companies are faced with the same task, to minimize the scope of poor decisions that can either directly or indirectly contribute to casualties or pollution incidents, including the decisions taken ashore as well as those on board ship. The International Ship Management Code for the Safe Operation of Ships and for Pollution Prevention, often shortened to the ISM code, was developed so that all staff are properly equipped to fulfill their operational responsibilities as safely as possible, ensuring that every action is based on a full understanding of the consequences. It establishes an international standard for the safe management and operation of ships by setting out rules for the organization of company management and the implementation of a safety management system, SMS. The goal of the SMS is to establish standardized company procedures by specifying a commitment to safety and environmental protection by providing a reporting and tracking system for undesirable incidents and by establishing routines to prevent the reoccurrence of undesirable incidents. The functional requirements for a safety management system include a safety and environmental protection policy and instructions, procedures and checklists that ensure the safe operation of a ship 
and the protection of the environment in compliance with relevant international, national and port state regulations. It also defines the levels of authority and lines of communication between and among shore and shipboard personnel. Further requirements include procedures for reporting accidents and non-conformities within the provisions of the code, procedures to prepare for and respond to emergency situations, and procedures for internal audits and management reviews. All companies should have a safety and environmental policy that describes the aim of the safety management system. It also outlines a strategy and plan of action to achieve and maintain the aim. Key elements of the plan might include compliance with rules, regulations and industry guidelines, as well as active participation by personnel to achieve high levels of safety. All activities should be done in accordance with SMS procedures and there should be open communication among crew members and shore staff, including the designated person. A good safety and environmental policy should encourage everyone to suggest improvements regarding policies and procedures. And there should always be enough training and education to achieve high standards of safety and environmental protection. Lastly, it's essential that the safety management system is continually reviewed to ensure it is realistic and suitable enough to meet the crew and vessel objectives. The SMS consists of a documentation structure that contains the main book, the ship book and the vessel response plan. The main book includes policies and procedures applicable to the whole organization. The ship book includes procedures, routines and checklists referring to onboard operations. It can be divided into the general part, the bridge order book, the cargo or deck order book and the engine order book. The vessel response plan includes procedures and checklists of relevant actions in case of emergencies such as grounding, touching bottom, collision, fire and explosion, hull failure, excessive list and equipment failure. The SMS is a dynamic system that is under constant development. It needs to be updated to make changes to practical operations or to correct instructions or procedures found to be in error. It may also require updating when there is a need for modifications or rebuilding to be carried out on a vessel. A fundamental component of the SMS is the designated person, DP. Overseeing the operation of the SMS, this person acts as a safety valve or short fuse when there is a problem with matters concerning safety or pollution. If there are any concerns about safety or pollution that are not being handled appropriately on board, any crew member can contact the DP. They will try to correct the situation, with the added benefit that they can bring critical issues to the top management's attention without delay. According to the ISM code, there are certain events or circumstances that must be reported to the designated person immediately. An accident is an undesired event that may harm the environment, cause major damage to the ship and machinery, or result in injury or loss of life. Hazardous occurrences, commonly referred to as near misses, are undesired events that could have resulted in an accident under different circumstances. Accidents and hazardous occurrences should be reported, as many future injuries or accidents can be avoided. Non-conformities must also be reported to the designated person. According to the ISM code, when objective evidence indicates non-fulfillment of a specific requirement stated by the safety management system, a situation of non-conformity is considered to have occurred. A minor non-conformity indicates a need to fix the SMS, but a major non-conformity 
indicates a serious breakdown and is grounds for the withdrawal of the ship's ISM certificate and the detention of the ship. Finally, it is the responsibility of each individual, ashore and on board, to report to the appropriate officer or manager whenever any part of the SMS has to be revised. A suggested modifications and improvements to the SMS report should be forwarded to the designated person. When the DP receives the report, it should be thoroughly reviewed, evaluated and, if necessary, sent out for comments to all vessels before the change is applied. Urgent modifications or improvements should be implemented as soon as possible, whereas suggested changes that are deemed to be clerical, not urgent or a matter of routine, should be properly filed by the designated person and implemented on a biannual schedule. The ISM code has no specific requirement for records to be kept, with the exception of those relating to inspections, non-conformities and the corrective actions. In practice, however, you can't show that you are following the SMS unless you keep records, such as copies of Accident and Hazardous Occurrence Reports completed checklists, expired work permits, and records of maintenance and testing. Digital photographs can show that emergency drills took place on schedule and can be useful when discussing the effectiveness of drills. Maintaining accurate records is essential as audits or inspections against the ISM code will look for evidence showing that you have done what the SMS tells you to do. The records produced and the time for which they shall be retained on board is stated by the company. So don't throw away any expired permits and checklists without looking at your company's retention policy. As well as maintaining records, the SMS also requires regular reviews to ensure that it still works well. The first type is an onboard review. This serves as a continuous improvement process as all employees should continually review the SMS. The master should formally review the SMS at least once a year. This is done to ensure the vessel is operating within the SMS and that the procedures are realistic and suitable. Management reviews should be conducted annually to ensure that accidents, hazardous occurrences and experience reports are analysed in order to review trends in incidents. Audit findings are analysed and master reviews are evaluated. A management review also ensures that there are recommendations following class and statutory surveys and discussion of upcoming regulations and that there are considerations for updating the system as a result of fleet changes, trade and market strategies, new regulations or changes in social and environmental attitudes. These all form a part of reviewing policy to ensure it meets current needs. Audits are formal checks that verify compliance with the ISM code. Both the office and every vessel have to be audited. After passing the audit, the office gets a document of compliance and the ship gets a safety management certificate. The ship and the office will have an internal audit by company staff at least once a year or an external audit by the class society or flag state. According to the ISM code, this checks that everybody is following the safety management system. Only a small portion of injuries are caused by exceptional incidents, such as collisions and grounding. The number caused by the failure of machinery or equipment is small compared to those caused by human error, which is said to be the cause of around 80% of accidents. The majority of these accidents arise because recognized safe working practices or company procedures have not been followed. Some accidents occur because of lapses in concentration or misjudgments. Others are caused by inexperience or recklessness. And overconfidence can lead to carelessness which can particularly affect experienced seafarers who have performed the same task many times. In nearly all operational procedures and instructions, safeguards are created to protect the environment from any kind of pollution.
You should always follow safe working practices and not deviate from any written procedure or instructions. Before carrying out any task on board, check the SMS to see if there is any written procedure or plan that describes how to do it safely and effectively. If so, you should follow that plan. A checklist is a written memo to accomplish a series of tasks. It is not a substitute for knowledge of the ship or procedures. Examples include the preparation for sea checklist, the pre arrival checklist for the engine room, and the pre arrival checklist for the deck. In case of emergencies, checklists should be used as memory aids. In these types of situations, everyone is under stress, so extra care needs to be taken to ensure important tasks aren't missed. Examples include the fire location checklist, specifying the actions to be taken for fires in different locations, the man overboard checklist, and the loss of power or blackout checklist. In order to avoid accidents and eliminate risk, any work should be planned and you should get confirmation that the task will be safe by having a permit issued before the work starts. All permits should be prepared correctly and suitably trained crew members should carry out the work. Before a hot work or an enclosed space entry permit is issued, the relevant SMS procedure must be consulted. The permit should specify the item of equipment or area involved, the extent of the work, the conditions to be observed, and the time and duration of its validity. This usually won't exceed 24 hours, and the time period may be shorter for some types of permits. Hot work permits should be issued when a task involves the risk of fire or explosions, which can be caused by such tasks as welding or grinding. You should be aware that some companies require hot work jobs to be reported to the office before being started. Enclosed space entry permits should be issued when there is a lack of oxygen or if there are dangerous gases present. Examples include tank inspections and entering cargo holds without forced ventilation. An electrical work permit should be issued for any job where there is a risk of electrical shock such as replacing electrical fittings. Working aloft permits should be issued when someone can fall from height. This could happen when replacing navigation lights or any other work so high up that you risk injury by falling. Working outboard permits should be issued when there are risks such as falling into the sea. This could happen when rigging a pilot ladder or when work is being done outside the ship's hull. A cold work permit should be issued for non-routine mechanical work, where the work could cause an explosion if there is an unexpected gas present. But a cold work permit also covers other work, such as opening up a previously pressurized container. Small craft alongside permits should be issued with jobs involving the risk of static electricity or sparks, either of which may cause an explosion. Examples are securing a bunker barge or other small boats coming alongside. Underwater work permits should be issued when tasks involve the risk of a diver being injured by the propeller or the sea intakes, as may happen during a diver inspection. The procedures in your SMS manual improve safety and minimize the risk of pollution. These aims are shared by the rules of SOLAS and MARPOL, but they also have some specific requirements for plans and procedures that may be kept separate from your SMS. For example, MARPOL requires most ships to carry a garbage management plan. This contains written procedures for collecting, storing, processing and disposing of garbage, including the use of equipment on board. It also specifies the person in charge of carrying out the plan. MARPOL also requires a shipboard oil pollution emergency plan. This contains written procedures for reporting and responding to an oil pollution incident, including contact information and procedures for coordinating the ship's response with local authorities. 
Plans required by SOLAS that may be kept separate from the SMS include the ship security plan. This contains procedures to protect the people on board, the cargo, and the ship from any risk of an incident. It does this by setting out procedures on how to provide security and how to respond to a breach. For passenger ships, decision support systems may also be kept separate. These contain plans for dealing with emergencies, such as fires, damage to the ship, pollution, unlawful acts that threaten the safety of the ship and the security of its passengers and crew, personnel accidents, cargo-related accidents, and emergency assistance to other ships. The best ways to avoid equipment failure is through regular maintenance and testing. The ISM code requires the company to establish procedures to ensure that the ship is maintained in accordance with the relevant regulations and to identify equipment and technical systems that might cause a hazardous situation if it fails. This is often referred to as critical equipment. The SMS should contain measures to promote the reliability of such equipment or systems, including regular testing of standby arrangements and equipment or technical systems that are not in continuous use. The maintenance has to be planned and most vessels today have a computerized maintenance system, which helps ensure important maintenance work or scheduled testing of critical equipment is not missed.